Okay, on to lesson six. This is our introduction to the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. Before we move on, um, we probably need to know how to name different types of benzene types of structures. So we have a phenyl group, if we look at it that way. So if R is your big one, and this we consider a phenyl group, this would be a benzyl group. So those are sort of in their separate category. Past that, there's uh, quite a few names that you just have to know. Benzoic acid, phenol, benzonitrile, which obviously I messed up in writing, aniline, nitrobenzene, benzaldehyde, toluene, um, and benzene sulfonic acid. So those are things that you probably just want to commit to memory. You might not want to, but you probably should. Okay, so talking about the electrophilic aromatic substitution types of reaction. Benzene and its derivatives do not behave like everything else that we've ever looked at. It's not a diene, it's not a ene, it's not a triene, it is its own entity. To break the aromaticity apart from benzene and give that a different product would be a very, very high energy type of reaction. As a matter of fact, catalyzed in order to even remove that pi bond conjugation system, it often takes 250 degrees Celsius, and that's a catalyzed type of reaction. Um, we're talking very high energy here. So it's just not the way the benzene reacts. There's a whole separate um, field of reactions that happen only with benzene. And so when you start talking about benzene and how to do synthesis with benzene, we have to put it in its own category. All of the reactions that you've learned in the past, you have to put aside and see those as separate entities than what we're about to look at. Now, if you have a substituent that comes way away from benzene or the next carbon over, then yeah, it'll still work the old way. But when you're actually reacting benzene, it's different. Here's what I mean. This is the general mechanism that we're going to look at as we move forward. Benzene, the first thing it does when it sees an electrophile is it takes its electrons and says, okay, I'll come, I'll come over and check you out. Now, that's a slow process. It's a slow process because you just created a positive charge and interrupted that aromaticity. However, the reason why this even occurs and I didn't write it here not to confuse you, it's down here, because that is stabilized through resonance structures and resonance forms. So that's why this is even formed. Any type of base that's in the, um, in the reaction will then come and abstract that hydrogen and electrons go back. This actually reestablishes the aromaticity of that compound and the electrophile ends up being there. Keep in mind that when we looked at things before, a nucleophile would attack that positive charge. And so that's exactly opposite to what we see in this reaction. Um, ele the um, electrophile actually substitutes where the hydrogen was. So it's, it's actually removing this hydrogen and going in to where it was before. You can't have five bonds to a single carbon, so yes, that hydrogen actually left. So for our first mechanism, let's look at how bromine in the presence of FeBr3 as a catalyst reacts with um, benzene. First thing that happens is the bromine and FeBr3 kind of huddle up here, leaving a pos positive charge on that bromine and a negative charge on the iron. The positive charge on this bromine kind of makes that guy kind of positive too. He's too occupied. He's got too much stuff around him right now to really be involved in that reaction. So electrons come over from our um, benzene and react with that bromine. That way that guy leaves. And we end up with the same type of state that we just talked about. And you'll see this over and over and over again. So that positive charge, I went ahead and drew it in the mechanism here, is stabilized through resonance. 
And then this bromine can leave and pick up that hydrogen at the same time, allowing the electrons to come back to that benzene, and bam, you have bromobenzene. You also get out your other stuff, but mm, I'm not as concerned about that. It is important to note, though, that you end up with an acidic condition that you have to control um, at the end of this reaction. If you wanted to do this and end up with a uh, chlorobenzene instead, you would use FeCl3 and Cl2. Uh, notice we do try to match that, so Br2 and FeBr3 because you could have some exchange rate that happens there, and Cl2 and FeCl2, so or FeCl3, excuse me. So the Cls can kind of um, come on and off the Fe um, without that being a problem and you end up with a mixture of bromine and chlorine. Iodine, kind of reactive, like explosive when it comes to adding many metals to it. So we tend to not do that very much. But what you can do is take I2 in the presence of um, peroxide and sulfuric acid and make this its own electrophile that sort of goes through the same process as what you see over there, and you end up with iodobenzene. Nice, simple um, type of mechanisms for our first day. Don't worry, we'll get more complicated in the next lessons. Okay, thank you very much.